I'm the chief executive at JET, so I oversee all the management of all the programs, all the projects, policies, finance, strategies, business planning. At JET for 11 years, when I originally started JET, there were only two, mem two members of staff, and we're part of Newcastle City Council's ESOL service, English for Speakers of Other Languages. So you literally built the whole charity? Yeah. Basically, there was there was somebody else uh, here for nine months who was uh, above me when I started. Um, they developed themselves really out of a need from the what, what we saw that the customers needed. Um, originally, we had one big pot of money, which allowed us to do pretty much whatever we wanted as long as it was around training and employment and integration. But as times have changed and funding's been cut across the whole country, um, we've had to diversify and have specific pots of money and specific staff working on specific programs rather than all the staff working towards the same goals. So for example the Ladies Integration Project which is the Thomas Project, Tyneside Orientation and Migrant Support Service um, is specifically around integration. It doesn't have a slant on employment which is really unusual for JET. All of our other programs do but we have some mainstream programs as well. We have Job Centre Plus money, Department of Work and Pensions money, um, National Career Service subcontract, Work Programme subcontract. So all of those are very, very employment focused, whereas the Ladies Project is about helping them to integrate and get ready for the next steps when they're looking for employment. All the time, all the time. I mean, I had I was here. I was the only one here last night. Later on, and the phone was ringing, uh, and we had two people who wanted uh, IT classes for people who had English as a second language and low level English. Well, the funding has gone for that now, so we actually can't help them with that. Uh, level two English. Yeah, ESOL, and that's kind of disappearing as well. And trying to find out where people can access that, and there's a lot of uh, changes with the skills funding agency to fund all different courses. Um, and if you do a level two qualification, you can only do one level two qualification that's funded. So if you did a level two in ESOL, you cannot then do a GCSE or um in English unless you pay for it. But if you then want go on to want to go to university or further study, you have to have a GCSE. So it's kind of like an ESOL qualification is completely different to a, a GCSE in English. The standards and the, the way it's taught and the way you, you do the exams, it's completely different. So there's always a disparency in, in, the, in the, pro, um, the different programs that are available. Because I think people, I shouldn't say it, but in, like at the Skills Funding Agency, really don't understand what's happening on the ground and the effects that has on people. It's fantastic and it's nice to see um, how it affects their families as well and how it affects their kids and how all it like empowering people in that way uh, it, it trickles down all the way down to everybody else in the family so yes it's good. The best way to do it is through um, publicity obviously from the councils and from the um, local training providers who can support us at the job centre but they're tied with government legislation and things like that and then the grant organisations tend to be national so how do you get information out to national organisations about what we do because it's not very um, cuddly is what I would say you know uh, you're not helping you know people who are dying you're not helping animals you know and um, people are not always homeless although that risk of homelessness uh, they're not necessarily homeless so it is harder to say what we are doing and how it helps um, the greater economy as it were you know in, in integration stops a lot of other issues and crime and um, yeah so it's, it's difficult but we do have good marketing streams so we have newsletters we have our website we have twitter we have facebook for um, two of our programs i'm also trying to raise funding ourselves now we've got a new um, community well it's a it's a cafe it's just open to staff at the moment but it's going to be open to the public soon that's the wicker chair coffee shop and bistro so look out for that one coming and we're hoping that will bring in funds which will ultimately um, feed back into JET which will give us more flexibility and we can make our own decisions and so we would prefer it to be open to all which is the ultimate goal.